okay this video is uh, intended to be used to learn how to use the Excel spreadsheet created to be able to calculate water surface profiles um, especially applied to the open channel used in the laboratory on open channels in BBE 3012. Okay, so this uh, particular spreadsheet is one of the ones that's posted online on the Moodle site. And this one is for the case of supercritical flow. Um, and you can see here the labels for the different columns and numbers. There's uh, X2, which would be a position uh, variable. Y2 is depth at point 0.2. A2 would be the cross-sectional area at point 0.2. P2 would be the wetted perimeter at point 0.2. R2 would be the hydraulic radius at point 0.2. V2 would be the mean velocity at point 0.2. And bell head would be the velocity head at point 0.2. The uh, friction slope at point 0.2 is SF2. And then all these numbers with ones on them are the uh, corresponding variables calculated at uh, point 0.1. From these calculations, the average friction slope is calculated um, using the, uh, well, sorry, this is SF1. And then the SF average would be the average of uh, the friction slope at point 0.2 and the friction slope at point 0.1. Uh, from those uh, numbers, we can calculate the distance between point 0.1 and point 0.2. That distance is given here. Um, the negative distance because we're calculating uh, values uh, downstream. And uh, x1 would be the position of the... Uh, at point one. Uh, we're actually calculating upstream. So point one is upstream of point two. The negative numbers for the x values just means that uh, uh, we're going from zero and moving upstream. All right, so we've got a number of rows of numbers here um, so that we're doing calculations for the free surface at about 10 points. The Parameters used in the calculations are the discharge in the channel, the slope of the channel, the Manning's roughness coefficient, the width of the channel, and then uh, we calculate the normal depth for the flow that's given and the slope and the friction factor, I mean, and the Manning's N. The... Um, what we'll call a starting depth, and I'll introduce that, the change in elevation between points, and then the critical depth, which is calculated using the channel uh, characteristics. And it also calculates a food number and tells you whether or not it's uh, supercritical flow or subcritical flow. All right, so we would put in here the uh, discharge in cubic meters per second, CMS, and for um, about 130 gallons per minute, that corresponds to a discharge of 0 0.0082 cubic meters per second. That 130 gallons per minute is the discharge that, uh, one of the discharges that was used in the channel uh, experiment. And the slope of the channel is two inches drop over 42 feet, which is about 0 0.00389 meters per meter. Uh, Manning's roughness coefficient, it's a plexiglass surface um, and acrylic surface, so it's very smooth. Manning's roughness coefficient is probably around 0 0.01, 0 0.012, something like that. So I'm going to put 0 0.01 in here. The width of the channel is about three feet. I know that that's not exactly correct, but uh, it's about three feet, so I put one meter in here. Um, <clears throat> from the channel properties and the discharge, we can calculate the critical depth, and that's 0.019 uh, meters, so about two centimeters 
of depth. And we need to determine what the normal depth of flow is from Manning's equation. And this number that's in here right now is not the uh, correct number for, um, uh, for the normal depth. And so we need to determine what the normal depth is. And these two numbers down here help us to do that. This first number is the product of the discharge times Manning's N divided by the uh, bottom width or the channel width times the slope raised to the one half power. That's part of uh, Manning's equation written in F for SI units. So that number is 0 0.0013. We need then to choose the value of the normal depth here, yn, such that these numbers match up. And in general, you would have some odd number in here. You wouldn't know ahead of time what that value is. So if I put a normal depth of 0 0.05 in here, you can see that these two numbers don't match up. Basically, Manning's N, if you were to take all the information that's uh, about the discharge, the roughness coefficient, the channel width, and the slope, bring them to one side of the equation. The other side of the equation would contain the area times the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power, and both of those contain the uh, normal depth of flow. So YN here is the unknown, and that's why we're calculating that uh, parameter um, by changing this value of the normal depth, we wait until we match up these two numbers, and at that point, we know we have the correct value of the normal depth. So that comes out to be about 0.0185. By, by trial and error, you can achieve, uh, get to the point where you've uh, got those uh, values matching. So you can see that the normal depth is 0.0185 meters. The critical depth is 0.0190 meters. That gives us a fruit number of 1.04, which is, uh, means that the flow is uh, supercritical. Um, <clears throat> for the experiment, as I recall anyway, the depth of flow at the downstream end with the uh, flume there was maybe about four to six inches deep. So um, that would be a depth of about between 0.1 and 0.15 uh, meters. I'm going to go ahead and put in 0.15 here. I'm um, not sure what the actual number was. Uh, the algorithm here automatically calculates a change in depth dy from that initial depth um, of 0.15. Uh, such that we're going from the initial depth of 0.15, and we know eventually it's going to, uh, the free surface will decrease, uh, and the water will decrease in depth down to the normal depth of 0.0185. So if you're going from 0.15 to 0.0185, it requires a reduction in depth. So that's why you have a negative uh, 0.0132, and this is done in the same number of increments as there are uh, lines in here. So <clears throat> it's about 10 or 11. So the uh, if you take 0 0.15 minus 0 0.0185 and divide it by, looks like uh, 11 values, it should give me this minus 0.0132. So uh, we start off here in the calculations with uh, at point two, which is at the downstream end of the channel, right near where the uh, H flume is. It <clears throat> has a uh, X position of zero, has a depth of the starting depth of 0.15. The, the uh, program then uh, Excel then calculates the area, the wetted perimeter, the hydraulic radius, the velocity. Velocity is calculated based on the discharge. Velocity had friction factor or the friction slope. And then uh, it says, well, the next depth is uh, going to be the uh, next uh, the next value. Well, the first value was 0.15. We subtract off this 0.0132, that number is 0 
for the depth at point one. We then calculate A1, P1, R1, V1, velocity head, friction factor, and to get the average uh, friction slope, or not friction factor, friction slope, and then we get the average uh, friction slope. And from the equation that I showed in class, we can calculate the uh, distance between those two points based on that information. And uh, that distance is uh, 3.37 <coughs> meters. So my new position, or position of point one, would just be the difference between zero and uh, 3.37, which is uh, gives me a position x equal to minus 3.37. It's minus because we're starting from zero and going to the left in the uh, calculation. So that new position x1 becomes the, or that position x1 becomes the new position x2. So that's minus 3.37. The depth is 0.137, which was what 0.1's depth was before. And we go through and calculate all the parameters again. And the new position at 0.1 is just 0.137, uh, adding this minus 0.0132, which is 0.124. And just go through the calculations again. And you can see here that uh, these values of delta x um, change as uh, slightly, they change slightly as uh, we march upstream. And um, so the positions x1 uh, increases, well, you, as negative sign, the, the magnitude of it decreases or increases as we go from uh, 0 up through uh, 34 meters. So we reach the depth of uh, 34 meters. Um, and that's uh, the the depth is 0.019, which would be approximately what the, or it's actually 0.0185 would be the normal depth. I've only got three decimal places uh, listed there. It would take four decimal places to show the actual normal depth that I see there. So we go from the uh, flooded depth at the, at the H flume down to um, the normal depth upstream at about 35 meters. Now I know that the flume is not that long. It's only 42 feet long. So the um, actual depth would be, um, or the actual length of the flume would be about uh, 13 meters instead of uh, 35. So we're really looking down in this range here for the actual length of the flume because there's minus 15. And so the uh, depth would go from whatever we assign for the depth at the, whatever is the measured depth at the uh, H-flume down to this depth at, uh, at about 13 meters would be the uh, <clears throat> depth in the channel that we should have measured. And what I'm asking you to do in the lab is to see how well these points that are calculated with this program compare them to the measured value. So you'll uh, substitute in here, or you'll plot in here as well, your measured uh, depths that you uh, obtained in the laboratory. And hopefully they'll match up pretty well. One thing you can do to try to match them would be to uh, the thing that was uh, principally unknown here, but was estimated with the Manning's N. So if they don't match very well the first try, we can change the Manning's N until they uh, until you get a better match. Once Every time that you change the Manning's N, though, you need to uh, modify the normal depth that you're starting from, because or that you're using here, because uh, uh, that by changing that uh, Manning's N, you change the pair of numbers, or you change this number right here, and I'll illustrate that here. So let's say that maybe 0 0.01 wasn't the number that gave a good match between the observed and the uh, calculated depth. Maybe I try 0.015 as a trial here, and you note that uh, the top number uh, changes, so we need to change the normal depth, and we do that. Um, by putting in uh, a larger depth. So let's see if I put in 0 0.02. 
uh, 0.0325. Uh, so it's about 0.024, something like that. Uh, 0.0245. Yeah, falls right on there. So with a normal depth of 0.024, we get uh, a match here. The uh, fruit number is 0.68, and I thought that I had this in here so that if uh, the fruit number was... Um, greater than one. This should have turned out to be, oh, it should be greater than one, not greater than zero. That's a mistake. All right, so with that corrected, the fruit number is less than one, so the the flow is subcritical. Never a uh, better time to try to fix things than when you're on a video. So, um, so the flow is subcritical uh, in that case. I'm not saying that's what will happen. So. You, you might find uh, that things would match up better. The starting depth should then, uh, is not going to change. We'd still have to be 0.15. And with this normal depth, we would just be modifying this uh, inc increment and in depth that will be used in calculating the free surface. But that's done automatically because it's always the difference between the starting depth, which was fixed, and this normal depth, which we just recalculated. So with that, uh, again, like I say, I would like you to um, do these, uh, use this uh, spreadsheet to do these calculations, superimpose your measured depths or compare your measured depths. You could do it with just a table of numbers. You've got the uh, depths and positions here. You could just compare your measured uh, depths to the calculated depths or else you could plot them on a graph and see how well they match up. All right.